Ah, okay, this is working. Okay, so uh, I'm going to try and keep this short. It's hard to do on the subject of good people receiving eternal life. Um, it's an idea that we've rejected. You know, it used to just be understood. Good people go to heaven, bad people go to hell. I don't like to use go to heaven because it's not really a scriptural term. Inheriting the kingdom of God or receiving eternal life is the scriptural term. And uh, so to go, we've messed up the foundations. And that the foundation is that good people receive eternal life and evil people are condemned. Um, a, a lot of people are not even going to be able to listen to that. But if you're one of those who can, then I'm going to try and show you in the scriptures that this is foundational. And that what Jesus came to do was to make us righteous people who could inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so one, in Romans chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, it says that we're going to be judged according to our works and that those who patiently continue to do good will receive eternal life. Now, nor normally evangelicals just gloss over that because, I mean, what we don't believe that. Well, it was stuck in my craw for six years and, you know, until I finally figured out what was going on. And what's going on is that we have a wrong idea of what the judgment is. We think that the judgment is, uh, you know, God's going to punish us for one sin. He needs a sacrifice in order for our sins to be forgiven. But we have a bad habit of taking verses that are about something else and applying them to, to, to what they're not about. So James 2.10 says that, you know, if we're guilty of one point of the law, then we're lawbreakers. But the point is that you shouldn't judge others because we're all lawbreakers. That's what it's about. But there's other verses that talk about God judging us. James 2.10 is not one of them. You know, in Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 20 through 30, that's Old Testament. God says this is a just judgment. A just judgment is that if you do righteousness, then you live because of the righteousness you have done. If you do wickedness, then you die because of the wickedness you have done. If you repent of your wickedness and do righteousness, then God says, I'll forget all the wickedness you've ever done, and I will give you life for the righteousness that you are doing now. If you stop doing righteousness and start doing wickedness, then you will receive death for the wickedness you're doing now, and I will forget all the righteousness you did in the past because you're doing wickedness now. And God argues several times that that is a just judgment. And that's just like Romans chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Those who patiently continue to do good get eternal life. So the other verse that goes with that is Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 to 9. Do not be deceived, it starts with. A lot of us have been deceived about this. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Those who sow to the flesh, whatever a man reaps, he will sow. Those who sow to the flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. Those who sow to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap everlasting life. Therefore, do not grow weary in doing good, for in due season you will reap if you do not faint. So, you know, he's going, the, the difference between Romans 2.6 and Galatians chapter 6 is that Romans 2.6, it doesn't, you know, that's before Romans chapter 3 and Romans chapter 7 that says that we're really not people who can patiently continue to do good. So that's the problem in Romans chapter 2 verses 6 and 7. We're not people who can patiently continue to do good and reap eternal life. So what do you think we need? We need to be changed into different people, and that's what Jesus did for us. So Galatians 6, because now we have the Holy Spirit, talks about sowing to the Spirit so that you can have eternal life, but it then equates that with not growing weary and doing good because you have to do good to receive eternal life. But Jesus died so that we could become righteous people who do good. So that's in Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, where it says the grace of God that brings salvation. Okay, grace is not mercy. It's something different than mercy. So many times when we say we're saved by grace, we mean we're saved by having our sins forgiven. But the grace of God that brings salvation, Titus chapter 2, verse 11, has appeared 
teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, godly, and righteously in this present age. That is what grace does for us. Romans 6, 14 adds that we're not under the sin does not have power over us because we're not under law, but under grace. So grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, waiting and looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearance of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us. This is why he died. He gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity and to purchase for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. So he died to redeem us from iniquity. Grace teaches us to live soberly and righteously. And in giving us these great gifts, which uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 calls great and precious promises that gives us everything that pertains to life and godliness, now he has equipped us to do good works and receive eternal life. Um, if you look at the verses, that's what they say. And once you can see that, all the pages of the New Testament start falling into place. Now, we don't believe that, you know, but the problem is we've got so many difficult verses, so many verses we can't explain. Here's God's idea, the, the scripture's idea of the atonement, Paul's idea of the atonement. In Romans chapter seven, he tells us that the law can't free us from sin because sin is in our body, in our flesh. But in Romans chapter eight, it says that what the law could not do because it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and on account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in those of us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So now we have been redeemed from slavery to sin. Read Romans chapter six. It's all about our redemption from slavery to sin. And so now, by the Spirit, we can live righteously, and we have a choice, just like it said in Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 and 8, that we can sow to the flesh and reap corruption, or sow to the Spirit and reap everlasting life. Therefore, do not grow weary in doing good, for in due season you will reap. Reap what? In context, it's everlasting life if we do not faint. So in the same way, Romans chapter 8, verses 12 and 13 says, We are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. Just like Galatians 6, 7. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, then you will live. Just like um, Galatians 6, 8. If you sow to the Spirit, you'll reap everlasting life and you won't grow weary in doing good. And so I have a whole lot more of that on, on that subject at rebuildingthefoundations.org. I, I hope you can look at this. I know most of you won't even be able to consider it, but for those of you who will, this is what the church has all once believed in the second and third century. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry we've changed that now, but truth is what truth is, and the scriptures back up what the church believed back in its beginning times. Um, I hope you'll take the time to look at those scriptures. Thank you.